Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Jeremy Smith. Not long ago, uh, I guess it must have been about a week or so ago, I asked everyone here on YouTube what type of videos you guys would like to see while we're kind of all, you know, at home and, uh, you know, because of everything going on in the world right now. The one thing that everyone asked about was portraits, uh, which I guess is no surprise since I am a portrait photographer, but a few people even mentioned portrait lighting. So I said that I would give this my best go. It is a bit tricky to do without a model. Um, you know, uh, for about three or four days now, I've been very, uh, well, I've, I've been, it's been very amusing for me because I've been trying to figure out how to do this video. I've tried a few things and failed, but I decided to do this sort of on a small scale. And so what I'm gonna show you guys today is just going to be some of the common portrait lighting setups. Um, I just wanna show you guys some different so-called lighting patterns. So in order for me to do this, uh, the first thing I have to do is get rid of my hat, which I don't like doing, but there goes the hat. And also, I'm going to turn off my main light here. Now, I will apologize in advance. Normally, I don't look at the screen that I'm filming with, but uh, today I will be looking at the screen a lot because I have to be able to sort of like uh, see where the light's falling on my face. So whenever I'm doing my filming, typically I have this main light over here, but we're going to actually turn this light off because I can't easily move it around. I'm get rid of that one, like this. And instead, I am going to turn on this little light. And this little light is what we're going to actually use to show some different lighting setups here. Now, whenever we start talking about lighting, there's actually a lot of other things that we can talk about too. Uh, you know, like the quality of the light and how close the light is to the subject and all that. But we're not gonna get to that in this video. We're just gonna do the basics. <clears throat> so. In order to like start off, I typically recommend people, you know, have their light placed off at about a 45 degree angle from their subject and then kind of coming down at a 45 degree angle. So this light needs to kind of move up a little bit. I apologize if my cameras lose focus. Um, I've got a, an extra angle today to kind of help with that problem a little. So this is kind of like the sort of like starting lighting position, if you will. So you can kind of see where the light is uh, right now. Somewhere about right here is where I would start with my lighting on just any given day. But if we want to kind of look at these different lighting patterns, I'm going to start by moving the light sort of back closer to the axis of the camera and then away from the axis of the camera and kind of show you guys how things differ when we do that. If I take the light and move it back towards the axis of the camera, and by the way, normally I would do this with a boom stand. There isn't a lot of space for stands. I've got a ridiculous amount of stands in this small room. Um, so normally I would use a boom stand, so you wouldn't actually see this stand in the shot. <clears throat> but for this demonstration, we'll just have it right here. And so what would typically happen with this is you would get the light basically to where it's just about exactly on axis with the camera. And then our light's going to be still coming down to 45 degree angle. Um, it needs to be a bit higher here, which we can work on that a little bit. There we go. So we get it up like this, we get the light come, kind of coming down at this angle, and you guys can kind of see, this is our first lighting setup. And this lighting setup is called butterfly lighting. And butterfly lighting basically is characterized by having this little sort of butterfly shaped shadow um, below your subject's nose. It's kind of like a little butterfly wing there. You guys can kind of see that. So that's how that works out. Now, as we start taking this camera, or sorry, taking this light, further from the axis of the camera and starting to get it off to one side, this way or one side this way, we're going to start getting a little bit different type of light. Um, and you guys may have already noticed, the main light that I normally film with is actually off to about a 45 degree angle over on this side. So this is actually kind of, I told you guys that was that's where I start with my lighting. That's actually how I film pretty much all my videos to keep it safe in this, or to keep it simple in this small space. Okay, so you guys can see where we are here. Now if I take this light, off and start moving it off to the side. Okay, let's see, I'm gonna try not to bump into anything. Okay, so if we start moving off to this side, we start to see this elongating happening with this shadow on the side of my face. So you guys will notice that as I go this way, you know, that shadow that was under my nose is now shifting off to the side. And once it shifts off a little bit like it is right now, we get something else, which is called loop lighting. And so loop lighting is characterized by having this sort of like smaller loop shaped shadow right here off to the side of my nose. And so that's kind of where we are there. Now, if I take this light and keep on moving it even more off axis uh, of the camera, 
we're going to get even more uh, of a different effect here. So I'm going to do this too. Setting this microphone stand here probably wasn't a good idea, but anyways. Okay, so if I get it off this side right here, now you guys can see that our light is even further off to the side. I'll go ahead and I'll raise it up again, more like this again. I think we were approximately there before. So now we're getting something else. We're getting something called Rembrandt lighting. You guys may have heard this before. Um, Rembrandt lighting basically is where we start to get this sort of telltale um, sort of triangular patch shape of light. Because what's happening right now is, actually there's two things happening. Number one thing that's happening is, <clears throat> not as much light is reaching the right side of my face now. So now all the light's mostly centered here. So we're not getting as much light on this side. This just results in having a deeper shadow over through this range. And it also is resulting in that shadow that's being cast by my nose that was previously casting this sort of loop pattern. Now that shadow is getting longer. And that shadow is kind of starting to converge with this darker side of my face. Um, but there's still just a wee bit of light reaching this small area of my face here. And that's basically where we have our Rembrandt lighting. So it's a little bit more shadowed than our so-called loop lighting. If we take our light and move it over further still, again, we're going even further this way off axis of the camera. Um, if you go even further that way, now we're going to start to get into something that we call split lighting. Because what's going to happen now is basically no light is going to reach the opposite side of my face. And now I look very, very mysterious. I can look serious like this. Anyways, <laughs> you guys get the idea here. So that's basically what's happening with that. And that's basically it. Um, a lot of people make this more difficult than it has to be. Um, it's not that hard. Now, as far as the whole Rembrandt lighting thing, you guys may wonder why Rembrandt lighting is called Rembrandt lighting. Well, it's because of the old master painter uh, Rembrandt, uh, he often painted by the window, and so all of his paintings are characterized by that telltale sort of triangular shaped pattern. So that's what happens there. Now we could talk about other things. We could talk about, okay, this is what you want to do if you want to, say, make the light more contrasty, or you want to change how harsh the shadows appear and so on. And that's some things we can look at later, but simply just looking at how we place those shadows is going to be the main starting point. That's why I'm showing you guys this at this time. Now here's another point to make. A lot of these lighting techniques oftentimes end up getting sort of blended together. Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing this video or not. Depending on how long it is, I may go onto the computer and kind of show you guys some additional examples. Or maybe I'll just show you guys some examples in a little slideshow at the end. But keep in mind, a lot of these times, some of our lighting techniques end up being blended we're not necessarily like uh, just using one lighting technique or another. Sometimes you might end up in between lighting techniques. So you might be kind of closer to loop lighting, but it might be slightly more Rembrandt, um, or it might be kind of a mix between split lighting and Rembrandt. You know, you may be kind of in between. So don't think you have to be in these fixed lighting uh, positions, uh, uh, these fixed lighting uh, setups every single time. So keep that in mind. And the other thing is, Keep in mind that the way your subject is looking makes a huge difference. I mean, right now we're getting this sort of Rembrandt type look again, but if I start to turn, if I go this way, now we're starting to get more of a loop lighting effect. But if I go like this, we're starting to come back to Rembrandt. So if you're doing something very specific with your lighting like this, be sure to educate your subject on where the light is. You can tell your subject, hey, there's a light right there. I'm wanting to get this effect. And you can take a picture, a picture, and you can show it to them and say, hey, this is the face I'm trying to get. Try to maintain this head position. You know, you can, you may tell them, hey, you know, you can move around like this and you can move around like this and move around like this and move around like this, but keep your face facing this direction um, because that light is giving us the effect we want. So be sure to kind of tell your subject that, otherwise your subject is gonna be moving and they're gonna be posing and they're gonna be changing and you're just gonna be throwing your light off. So keep that in mind. Um, also keep in mind, if you're trying to sort of like do something very artistic where you can kind of take your time, that's where it makes a difference, uh, or that's where you oftentimes have the liberty of taking your subject and really placing them in a very precise way. But if you're going to say photograph a lot of people, 
uh, or if you're going to sort of like do a scenario where you want your subjects to be able to move around freely, like maybe you have a model who's got a lot of very expressive movements and you wanna be able to record all those, then in that scenario, keep in mind, it's gonna be better to sort of have a less constrained lighting setup. You probably would wanna use a Rembrandt lighting setup for that. You'd probably wanna do something more like uh, more like butterfly lighting. So that way you get a broader spread that would give your subject a little bit wider range of movement and everything because you wouldn't have to worry about the placement of the shadows nearly as much. So just a few additional things to keep in mind. Also, if you're a photographer, I highly encourage you to spend some time in front of your camera. It actually does help you with lighting. Um, the past several days when I was trying to take example photos of myself for this, I learned a lot myself. I like to go and sit and look at, uh, you know, the lighting setup from the subject position. It's always very helpful for me. So keep that in mind too. Don't be camera shy if you're a photographer. You need to get your behinds in front of the camera sometimes too. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it for this one. I obviously can take this many additional ways in the future. Let me know what you guys think. Um, let Write me in the comments if you have questions. And um, I wish everyone well during this trying time that we're currently experiencing. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith signing off.